So that's it. That's the complete sequence for the I squared C initialization uh, circuit for an AS5600. And this is everything that you need for it. And in this video, I'm going to explain the entire schematic and any changes I've made uh, in order for the complete hardware implementation of an I squared C without any microcontrollers. And that's the sequence that I was able to generate. So keep watching. So in order to initialize the I squared C device, the AS5600, um, you have to enter a specific sequence. And last time we only got through this part of it, which is the start condition followed by writing to the first address um, and the raw angle sensor and then the repeat start. So now today we're going to complete um, the hardware quote unquote program for this. If you remember the implementation, we used a whole bunch of different counters and shift registers in order to enter the clock pulses of the data and or them together. This is the final working schematic of the entire quote unquote program of the I squared C initialization protocol, and I'm going to go through it uh, in detail. So the entire thing starts with a CD4017 master counter which is the main so-called program loop, which sequentially goes through individual parts of the program. And there's a start condition in the first two outputs, then a pause, then a first sequence is run for 18 pulses. Um, and then the second, uh, then a repeat start, and then the second sequence is run. The clocking of the CD4017 counter is controlled by a 555 timer. The reset pin is pulled high, but there is a transistor that inverts it, and that's controlled by three separate signals at various points of the, of the process in order to stop the clock. A second 555 timer provides the clocking of the data signals and the pulses on the SCL line as well. And you can see where the second timer is uh, providing the pulses and the clocking for both the CD4017s and the shift registers. The data is stored and preloaded in the 74HC165 parallel load serial out shift registers. And that data, um, when it is uh, being clocked in, uh, be, uh, gets delivered to the um, data line um, and is, uh, through diodes, is basically ORed together. And you can see it highlighted in blue where the first sequence and the second sequence are put together. Now there's a, from output Q7, which is, controls the last sequence, there's a set of inverters um, which uh, pulls the line ultimately high. Uh, however, the, uh, this provides digital logic, which allows the um, first timer or first counter in the first sequence to be stopped um, while the second sequence is being loaded. And um, it also provides a um, clocking of the um, second sequence or the CD4017 controlling the second sequence. So all in all, that's the control logic and let's see it in action. Start condition. And then a pause during Q2. And the first sequence is about to begin. And it's clocking in the um, 01101100, followed by acknowledge bit. And then 00001100, followed by another acknowledge bit. And then a repeat start condition. And the data line always has to go down before the uh, clock line. And then the second sequence, and it should be 01101101 in order to read from the raw angle register. There's the start condition. It's collecting the data now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's the repeat start after the acknowledge bit. And it should be the same as the first address with a one at the end for writing. It stopped and the acknowledge bit is last. And as usual, I'm going to leave you guys with the complete final working schematic uh, that I went through earlier. Uh, if you have questions, leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching.